Hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne Kimball, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. In today's video, I'm going to explain how do you file a VA fully developed claim, also known as FDC claim. What is the VA's purpose of the FDC program? Which prescribed claim form do you need? What is some information on that prescribed claim form. And I'm gonna give you some examples toward the end. So make sure you stick around. Okay, everyone, before we get into today's video, make sure you get in the description section down below and sign up for my new monthly veterans membership program. We're already live, but it's still not too late for you to sign up. So today's video how do you file a fully developed claim what is the va's purpose which prescribed claim form that you need and i'm gonna provide some examples so let's go ahead and get into it slide number one here in slide number one this is the m21 manual reference now all these slides i'm going to show you are the m21 manual reference make sure you copy the number and the name that go out and look at these because sometimes I don't copy the entire M21 manual reference. So this one is purpose of the FDC program, fully developed claim program. The Department of Veterans Affairs designed the fully developed claim program for the purpose of reducing its backlog of pending claims. In the examples I give you is going to refute these two bullet comments and improving claims processing timeliness so when I give you these examples and these examples that I'm seeing now and I've seen when I was a raider okay and you're going to come back and you're going to think about it you're going to think about this after I give you those examples you're like man Dwayne did no you're right okay but do I believe in the fully developed claim program yes I think it's awesome if the VA employees were to use it for what it was intended for one, they wouldn't have a backlog and these claims will get processed a lot faster. All right, let's keep moving. Slide number two. Here in slide number two, this M21 covers the prescribed claim form. So what claim form do you need when you submit a fully developed claim? You need a VA form 21-526EZ. Now, that is for disability compensation. Obviously, if you're doing pension or survivor's benefits, those are different prescribed claim forms, okay? But for all intents and purposes, what we're talking about is disability compensation. You need a VA form 21-526-EZ. Let's keep going. Slide number three. Here's slide number three. This is information that you can find on that VA form 21-526. Now, the claim form itself is 15 pages long. There is a lot of information between page one and page seven. The actual application starts on page eight. In our first live webinar, in a veteran a monthly membership, we went through all seven pages and I broke it down for them, okay? But this is just one section, okay? FDC program, optional expedited process. You must submit all relevant private treatment records if they exist, identify any relevant treatment records available at federal facilities such as VA medical centers, identify the location and sufficient information to obtain the National Guard and Reserve personnel and service treatment records. Now, I'm not gonna read the rest of that, but they're telling you FDC program, optional expedited process, things you must do, okay? In the next section here, it says send the information and evidence along with your claim. When I filed a fully developed claim, my last one, uh, that, yeah, I did send some information in, and I'll explain that in the scenario I'm going to give you uh, once I get through all these slides. In the last box, it says if any of the special circumstances in the table below titled special circumstances apply send information and evidence identified in the special circumstances so i didn't create additional slide for the special circumstances 
But these special circumstances, some include, there's several, and guess where you can find them? Right below this section on the 526CZ, in between pages one through seven, okay? If claiming dependence, okay, because you're going to need a dependent form, a VA form 21-686C. So if you're claiming a dependent and you're 30% or higher, you need that form and they consider this um, the special uh, circumstances. Also, uh, IU, if you're claiming uh, PTSD uh, due to combat or military sexual trauma, special adaptive housing, okay, or special home adaptation, auto allowance, okay, these are just some examples of special circumstances. Move right along. Slide number four. Here in slide number four, this is the top of page eight. What I have circled in red, when you go to the VA's website, this is where the only location you should be going to, VA, to get this form is the VA's website. That way you know you are getting the up-to-date claim form. Expiration date, November 30th, 2025, okay? Now, in the first box, it says select the type of claim program, FDC. You are doing an FDC claim. So now I've covered the VA's purpose of the FDC program, which prescribed claim form that you need, what are some stuff you must have, and how to select it on a prescribed claim form. Now, they'll tell you I'm gonna give you some examples, okay? Uh, when I rate it, when I, yeah, when I rate it, I was rating when they came out with this program. And the way it worked, okay, and think about that first slide when they said to reduce the backlog and basically, basically to complete claims in a timely manner, okay? DBQ is already out, okay? So veterans started to complete disability benefit questionnaires, DBQs, and they would submit them. If you heard, if you, and you've heard me talk about this in some of my recent videos, okay? So veterans go to the VA's website, they download the DBQ, they take it to their private doctor, they have it completed per VA guidelines, and they submit it. Then you check that box on the VA form 21-526EZ, FDC, if that DBQ is actionable and sufficient, according to 38 CFR 3.326 subpart B and subpart C, and you're going to start hearing me say this regulation a lot. And guess what? That is a huge nugget because if you do what I'm about to explain, you can use this regulation in your favor and argue fact of law on a high level review, okay? So when the veterans would submit that actual sufficient DBQ, I get it. Oh, veterans just filled out the 526EZ a month ago, okay? It's on my desk, ready for decision. No CMP exam because the DBQ and or nexus, if necessary, is actionable but sufficient. I rate the case, veteran gets service connected, done, 30 days. But we know that's not what has been transpiring. Some VA employees are still scheduling CMP exams. And when they do that, they push the time frame of your claim out. So the example I just gave was a month, but let's just say they schedule you for an exam, you decide not to go, it goes back to the regional office, lands on the, another VSR's desk, oh, let's schedule the exam again, that's another month, you refuse, and it comes back. And now we're like at four or five months. So in that scenario, if you submit an action more sufficient DBQ per VA guidelines, and the VA employee can verify, yes, we can rate with this evidence under 38 CFR 3.326, subpart B and subpart C. I hope you wrote that down because that's the nugget. That claim could be done in record time. Not maybe not record time, but 
I would say within 30 days if it gets through that system pretty quick and lands on an RVSR desk. So according to slide number one, you reduce the backlog and get the claims completed in a timely manner. But that's not happening because some VA employees are not doing that. They probably haven't even read the M21 manual reference that I showed you. But when I rate it, everything was filled out according to the VA criteria and guidelines. I was rating that case and it was over and done with and got the veteran an answer ASAP, but some employees are not doing it. Don't know why. So if you decide not to go to an exam, I already dropped you a huge nugget, 3.326, 38 CFR 3.326, subpart B, subpart C. That's what you can argue fact of law, okay? Now, the majority of droves are saying, yeah, I agree, and they approve it. But if they're approving it, why couldn't the rater approve it? Okay, because if the rater would have approved it, approved it that would help the VA's backlog, and their claim, would have com their claim would have been completed in a timely manner. So... This is why, one of the reasons why I'm doing these videos to educate you on the VA claims process, okay? But you got to get educated. So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.